Good morning and welcome to today's ArcServe Unified Data Protection weekly webinar. My name is Charlie Smith and I work in the technical pre-sales team in the UK. And today I'm going to give you a kind of technical overview, a solution overview of what Unified Data Protection is all about. Um, and at the end of the presentation, we're going to go through a live product demonstration as well. So hopefully at the end of the session, you'll have a really good understanding of the solution capabilities, um, some of the key functionality that we support, um, and also a good look, uh, you know, good look, look and feel of the, the console and get a, an understanding of how we administrate and initiate recovery from the UDP console. So I'm going to get underway now. Um, my contact details are on the slide. So if you do have any follow up emails um, or you want to have a discussion later on, by all means, send me a mail and we can chat offline. But we will be doing a question and answer at the end. Uh, so if you do have any questions, use the question panel on the GoToWebinar software. Thank you. OK, so who are we? We are a, an enterprise data protection and disaster recovery company. ArcServe has been in the marketplace for, I would say, since probably 89, early 1990s, uh, where ArcServe first came on the scene as a data protection solution, primarily, primarily around uh, Novell Netware uh, file and print server platforms. Um, it was then acquired by a company called Computer Associates in 96 and further developed into open systems covering Windows, Unix, and Linux environments. Um, and in August 2014, ArcServe became an independent uh, company again, and we are now a global leader in data protection solutions, primarily for the mid-market. Uh, we have over 45,000 active customers under maintenance. Uh, we have over nearly half of those customers running our unified data protection platform, which is our disk-based backup and recovery. And we're going to talk about a lot about that today. Uh, we exclusively sell our software through our partners. Uh, so we have over 7,500 transacting partners around the world. We distribute software in over 150 countries. Uh, but we have a sales presence uh, with people on the ground in over 20 countries around the world. Our European headquarters are in Barcelona. Um, and we've won numerous awards in the last four or five years for UDP down to its innovative design and capabilities. And we'll talk more about that towards the end. So just some statistics about where we see customers having challenges, you know. 24% uh, of SMBs fell victim to, to some sort of cyber security breach last year. 71% of businesses experienced downtime in the past 12 months. Um, the cost to the business per hour on average is $300,000. Uh, if you take all businesses of all sizes and divide it down to their cost production cost versus the downtime. 22% uh, of SMBs feel good about their DR plan, which obviously means 78% don't, uh, which is a problem. 96% of Fortune 50 country, uh, companies around the world have a, a cohesive cloud strategy. 35% on average uh, reduction of IT management costs, so budgets are shrinking to manage more. 41% um, of backup and recovery workloads are now supported by cloud. Um, and 38% of those going to cloud are driven to enhance disaster recovery capabilities. So there's a lot of statistics to hit you there. But I think what you can take from this slide is there's a big gap in terms of organizations being properly protected against ransomware and crypto lockers. Um, and also, a lot of organizations don't have a cohesive disaster recovery plan, uh, which is a big worrying statistic as well. So we often ask customers, the, the I suppose it's a rhetorical question, but are you in control of your data protection? And often the responses we get back is, yes, we back up every day. You know, we're using these solutions and we've, we've got a few challenges here and there, but in the main it works. Uh, but the reality is, is that when we ask the question, are you in control, what we're really talking about is having a data protection solution in place which which aligns to the business needs and, and adheres to business SLAs. And often one of the 
worrying statistics is is something like 79 percent of customers out there only back up their systems once a day or less so what that means is is that if you have a critical outage in the middle of the working day um, and you have to recover that system from a backup you know potentially everything that's change since the last backup was taken, which could be over 24 hours, um, will be lost in that recovery process. And it's not until you go through that scenario that you suddenly realize actually for a critical uh, SQL database or a messaging or an email platform or some critical business application, you know, losing up to 24 hours worth of business data in a recovery scenario isn't necessarily acceptable. And the way we measure that is what we call the recovery point objective, which is how frequently should you protect your data or how much data can you afford to lose in a recovery process. Uh, another SLA metric that's more understood is what we call the recovery time objective, which is all about how fast can I get my critical systems or any system back online after a major outage or a disaster recovery event. So the recovery time objective historically for a lot of customers is a very reactive process. It's about let's get the backups running. We have to recover this VM or this physical server. Some backup solutions don't even have that capability to do full system level recoveries, which then involves you having to build the server manually, installing the operating system, configuring the system, installing the applications, and then recovering the data onto that system, which can take hours, if not days. Um, so really the RTO is a really key metric, um, and it's really about understanding what the business, how, how long can the business afford to be down in a, a critical situation. So these are really important metrics that you as an IT professional need to ask yourself. Your company needs to ask you those questions as well, because without having that kind of defined, um, it's a bit of a finger in the air scenario. And often that is the case when I do speak to customers. Um, the other challenge of course, is that when customers are starting to look for replacement data protection solutions in the market, they're often faced with a bit of a dilemma because if they want a solution that's very complete, and there are some very good data protection solutions out on the market, they often are very, very complicated to manage, and they're also very, very expensive. Um, then if a customer wants something that's easy to manage, it tends to be quite niche in what it can do. You know, it might be good at backing up virtual servers, but it's not good at doing any other things. Um, and often if you're looking for something that's cost effective, it lacks breadth of functionality um, as well. So it's very difficult uh, for organizations to change direction because they're often faced with this really difficult task of trying to find something that fits with the IT budgets. Um, it's very complete and it delivers all the functionality that the business needs. But the, one of the most important factors is it's easy to manage and you don't have to take, you know, a, a a two week training course just to work out how to do the basic administration in the solution on the product. So that's really where I think ArcServe can, can address a lot of these challenges. Um, other challenges is of course is hu huge data growth. Um, I think it's fair to say that most organizations are doubling their storage every three to five years. Um, and it's a quite a frightening statistic because from a hardware or a storage perspective, that's not really an issue. You know, the hardware industry are bringing out larger capacity drives. So you can swap out a disk array with a similar size disk array that's got two or three times the amount of storage capacity as your old disk array. So managing the storage growth isn't an issue. And a lot of organizations are moving their systems to the cloud to provide even more scalability um, because the storage expansion then becomes a cloud provider's responsibility and you just pay for a service. But the point is, is that all this data needs to be protected and managed. Um, and that's quite difficult, um, especially if you're using very old legacy backup technology, which really wasn't designed in an era where customers had so much data. The other problem of, as well is that, you know, most organizations are quite complex you will have virtual infrastructure in your in your organization you probably still have physical environments that you have to manage as well um, often 
this has been addressed with point solutions so you have multiple vendors to you know to to pay maintenance renewals and costs for multiple products that need to be managed that increases training costs increases the costs overall cost of the solution poor visibility of, of having consistent rpo and rto control across the organization and multiple solutions to manage now what do we do we can take that environment and start to manage it more effectively we can put control in place single console to manage everything um, everything's protected in a consistent way it makes it much easier to manage uh, lowers the cost for the organization as well and really that's what organizations are striving for is a single managed solution that manages everything in a cohesive way um, it doesn't require huge amounts of IT department effort to manage um, and it's effective it works it's reliable and when you need to restore or recover the system doesn't let you down it's there and it's and it has all that capability built in and our solutions have really been developed over the last four or five years to be very innovative very scalable uh, very feature rich um, and easy to manage as well so ArcServe UDP was first launched um, in May 2014 um, it was it was very fresh on the market because a lot of customers at that at that stage were still using products like backup exec and net backup uh, which were really sort of traditional uh, products that were designed originally to back off to tape which evolved to disk to tape but the point was is a lot of customers were struggling um, with you know stretching backup windows uh, having to manage complex consoles having regular support problems with the products uh, and really these products are really creaking uh, and customers needing to replace um, so we launched UDP software uh, it's a very innovative solution and we're going to talk about that today um, we also launched appliances um, in 2015 and our appliances are basically UDP in a box so instead of you having to go out and buy the servers the storage the compute and then the software to run on it you can buy an all-in-one solution that comes with everything and we'll talk about the capabilities of our appliances uh, in the coming slides as well uh, more recently we launched ArcServe cloud which we can provide um, both a hybrid cloud service which allows customers to back up their data on-prem using UDP either an appliance or software and then replicate the backups off-site to our cloud for disaster recovery um, that also in includes disaster recovery as a service where we can actually spin up your backups as compute in our cloud uh, and we'll talk again more about that in, a, in the coming slides we also launched a brand new technology called cloud direct which allows customers to back up smaller you know maybe you've got remote branch office sites where you've got a lot of sites to manage and you don't necessarily want to invest in backup servers and software and storage uh, to run at all these different sites so we have a capability now that we can back up data directly from your systems straight across the internet to the cloud uh, where you don't require any on-premise hardware to back up the data and that also supports a backup as a service and DR as a service as well and we'll talk more about that in the coming slides so in a typical ArcServe on-prem environment um, we would deploy um, a server called a recovery point server an RPS that RPS can be a software deployed solution onto your own server and storage um, or it can be an appliance uh, which is an RPS in a box a recovery point server and essentially that's a backup destination on the network that completely compresses down and deduplicates all your backup data now UDP can do agentless backup of VMware and Hyper-V environments without having to deploy any agents onto the VMs we've also got a smart agent that can be deployed on physical servers and other hypervisors that we don't necessarily support out of the box such as KVM Citrix Zen Acropolis uh, and others so with our agents and our agentless capability we can do very efficient innovative incremental forever snapshots of, of servers um, and we can press and dejupe that data down very efficiently onto the recovery point servers um, now UDP also has the ability to do things like offload to tape 
a lot of our customers, especially in the public sector and other heavily legislated um, organizations need to keep certain data sets for very long periods of time, such as 10, 15, 20 years plus. So for those organizations, tape still offers a very cost-effective way to retain and hold certain backup sets for very long periods of time. So we've got full integration into tape using the UDP technology, um, and we can actually do granular restore straight from tape as well if required. Now, as you start to deploy the solution out, it could be that you've got remote offices that you need to back up and protect. Depending on the size of these remote sites, if they're very small, we can do source side global dedupe straight across the uh, wide area network to a central data center or office um, without having to put any uh, backup infrastructure on, on site. If, however, it's a very, you know, a larger site, maybe you've got four or five terabytes or more, it might be more efficient to compress and dejupe locally onto an appliance or a virtual appliance or a software deployed RPS um, and then replicate the data from that remote location into your central site. And when UDP replicates recovery points between sites, it uses global dedupe around the replication as well. So we're very, very good at moving data by just detecting the unique blocks when we're replicating data off site. So it could be that you're replicating your branch office, remote offices to your head office, or it may be that you want to replicate your head office backups to a DR site or a second data center. It could be that at that second data center, you want to do local backups as well, and then replicate a copy back to your head office. So each site acts as a DR for the other. Um, but the point is, is that we can design the data flow on however you need it to go um, to encompass multi-site deployments. Um, and we're very, very efficient at moving the data, as I said before. Now, UDP provides all the kind of granular restore functionality that you would expect. So we can recover files and folders on physical and virtual machines. We can restore emails. We can restore SharePoint documents. We can restore um, databases, uh, Oracle, SQL, SharePoint databases, etc. We can restore physical machines onto different hardware. We call that bare metal restore. We can restore um, virtual machines in their entirety back to any hypervisor. Um, so we can do VM level recovery. Uh, but one of the things that's really unique about UDP is that we have this virtual provisioning technology uh, where we can actually convert your backups into virtual clones and spin them up very quickly for disaster recovery. So we call that virtual standby and also another variant of that is instant VM restore. And I'll talk about that in more detail in the coming slides. So UDP isn't just a backup and recovery solution. It's an automated offsite disaster recovery solution as well. And that's what customers really start to see when they look at UDP is that actually, this isn't just addressing our backup and recovery needs. It's also ticking a box for disaster recovery as well, which actually we put into our project plan as a different project. Um, and actually, you can actually cover two bases with one solution, if that makes sense. Now, UDP also has the capability to integrate with the cloud. So, for example, we can replicate your backups into Amazon, into the Microsoft cloud. We can actually replicate your backups into there. We can spin them up as Amazon or Microsoft Compute for disaster recovery. Um, so if your on-site system fails, you can actually run a clone copy as good as your last recovery point uh, within a few minutes and have that spun up in the public cloud uh, if you wanted. Um, we've also got the ArcServe cloud that provides the same or similar capability. Uh, to what we can do in the public cloud as well. The difference is, is that we provide a managed service around the whole thing when you go to the ArcServe cloud. Now, we have also got real-time replication and high availability. So in our what we call our premium plus license, and I'll talk more about licensing in a minute, um, we have a, a real-time replication capability to replicate physical and virtual workloads. And the difference between that and native UDP is that UDP uses snapshots and we can actually protect data up to every 15 minutes, whereas ArcServe RHA Replication HA has the capability to do live asynchronous replication. So that gives you a kind of near zero RPO and almost an instantaneous switchover 
capability as well. So we can manage all that from the UDP console. And really, depending on what your RPO requirements and RTO requirements are, we can really cover the whole range from live protection all the way through to periodic protection all the way through to archiving with our email archiving solutions as well. Now, the key thing about all of this is it's managed from a central web-based console. It's very intuitive, and uh, most customers get up to speed within one or two days of using UDP. They understand how to discover nodes, how to set their backup destinations, how to create their policies, and then away they go. It's really that simple. And we'll show you this when we do the demo in a, in a, in a little while. Now, UDP does incremental forever backup. So if you look at that gray column there, that's how a lot of traditional backup and recovery solutions work. They have to take regular full backups because they were designed to go to tape. Um, so if you look at products like Backup Exec, um, if you look at products like um, Net Backup and others, um, they were designed that you know every week you would take a full backup and then in, in between that you would do daily incrementals. The following weekend you take another full backup and so on and so forth. Now the, the challenge is, is that if you were recovering from tape, that scheduling engine was ideal for that scenario because when you want to restore from tape, often it was it's about restoring from the, f the least amount of tapes to speed up the recovery process. Um, so having regular full backups was actually a good thing. And in fact, we had lots of customers doing full backups every day for that exact reason. However, over the last five to 10 years, customers have moved into more disk-based backups where they're doing things like disk to disk to tape, uh, where they will disk stage their backups and hold it on disk for a short period of time, which means they can back up more systems concurrently. Um, and then they can stream it off to tape once the backup to disk completes. Now, the problem with that is, is that you still need to have a very big disk area um, and, you know, it's not that efficient. You know, there's no data deduplication. Now, off the back of that, a lot of customers then went out and bought things like HB store once or data domain boxes or Exagrid, um, which are dedupe hardware appliances, which will basically squeeze that data down and allow you to hold a lot more backups on disk than you were able to do otherwise. But the problem is, is that these DGP appliances are really, really expensive. So with the incremental forever, the way we do it is that we take a full snapshot the first time we back up a physical or a virtual machine or an Office 365 uh, mailbox accounts, etc. Uh, and then once we've got a base image of the data, we just then capture the incremental changes every time we run a backup. And then over time, what we do is we merge the incremental backups into the base data, and then we purge out the expired data. So it's really efficient. Um, it saves a lot of disk space. But then when you add the data deduplication and compression onto that, it squeezes the data down even further. So with our software, we're very good at managing uh, the space on disk. And the great thing is with ArcServe, you don't need to go out and buy one of these expensive hardware DGP appliances. We do it all within the software. So that means you can buy commoditized storage at fairly low cost um, and use the technology within ArcServe UDP to optimize the storage for you. So if you look at these, these are just some customer examples of DGP ratios. Um, it's a bit of an eye shot there, but I'll, I'll kind of magnify it a little bit. One of our customers who wrote an article on Spiceworks reported that they were backing up uh, a lot of data. They had over 254 terabytes worth of recovery points in their backup repository, which we call a data store. Um, but after compression and data deduplication, their overall data reduction was 94%. So they had over 250 terabytes worth of data that could be restored from, and that was actually sitting on just over 14 and a half terabytes of physical backup storage. So 94% data reduction is very high. Um, we have another customer who's predominantly virtualized in a VMware environment. They have over half a petabyte worth of recovery points on disk, um, and after compression and dedupe, they're getting a 97% data reduction. So that's sitting on about 13 and a half terabytes of storage. Um, so we are very good at reducing the size of the backups on disk. And what that means for you is that you can retain recovery points for much longer periods on disk. So if you then need to restore some from several months ago, 
you're not suddenly having to go out and find the tape and bring media back on site. You can just initiate the restore straight away from disk. So the more optimized the disk storage is, the more recovery points you can retain on disk and the less likely that you will have to go off and find another medium to restore from uh, because all the data that you need will be on disk ready to restore. So it's, it's a very important aspect of the solution. As mentioned already, we've got physical bare metal restores. We can, we can take a backup of a physical or a virtual machine and recover it onto a server, even if the server's different to the original server that was backed up. It's got different drivers. It's a different manufacturer. It doesn't matter. We can update all the drivers dynamically, or we can remaster the boot image so it will load the new drivers automatically, um, and we can recover to dissimilar hardware. You can also, for example, convert a virtual backup back onto a physical server. It might be that you want to restore a physical server onto a virtual machine. You can use BMR for that as well, or restore from one hypervisor to another. So it's very flexible and allows you to recover quickly at a system level, um, and we support that across Windows servers, Windows workstations, so anything from Windows 7 to Windows 10, and also Linux server distributions as well. Now, I'm going to explain a little bit how our virtual provisioning technology works, because this is a really innovative, uh, unique feature that we offer within UDP. Um, and what this allows customers to do is they can back up their servers, physical or virtual. In this example, it's a virtual agentless backup of a Hyper-V environment, uh, but it could be VMware to VMware or VMware to Hyper-V or physical to virtual. Um, so we do a backup um, and that node gets backed up into our data store uh, and it's compressed and deduped. Um, and then what happens when the virtual standby task kicks in, it creates a full virtual clone copy of that server by converting the backup into a clone. And that can be converted into VMware or Hyper-V format. And it works across hypervisors as well. So you can back up Hyper-V, spin it up into VMware or vice versa, uh, or physical to virtual. And then what happens is that every time you then take an incremental backup, we basically convert each incremental backup into a bootable snapshot against that clone. And you can control in the policy how many bootable recovery points you want to maintain against the clone. So if it might be the last five or the last 10. And the idea behind that is, is that you may have a scenario that you've had a virus attack. Um, and unfortunately, the last backup that, that was taken was taken after the system was infected. So you wouldn't necessarily always want to start the latest version of that recovery point as a virtual clone uh, because you may be powering on a system that's already been infected. So by being able to go back in time to an older recovery point means you can power on an earlier version before it before something's dramatically changed with the data integrity, you know? So it allows you to recover. Now we also can monitor the source. Um, so for example, if that system goes offline, we can get it to auto start up the clone for you in your DR environment. And that DR clone can be running locally on another hypervisor in your data center, or it can be running remotely where we actually do all this conversion from the replicated backups sent off site for disaster recovery. So it's really flexible. You can do local DR and remote DR using virtual standby. And virtual standby is very good if you need to have the performance for disaster recovery where these clones are coming up with really powerful, you know, they're running really strong IOP performance. They're running in a, a separate tier data store. They're an independent clone. Um, and there's no sort of ongoing conversion that needs to be done. Once they're powered on, they're ready for DR straight away. We also have a technology called instant virtual machine recovery or instant VM recovery. Um, and this works in quite a similar way as to what virtual standby works in the fact that we can back up the data and then we can spin it up as a VM. But the difference is with instant VM restore, we're booting up the virtual machine directly from the backup storage. So when we do this, we mount the data store using Microsoft Server for NFS, which is a uh, storage a remote access storage protocol um, and then we can register the hypervisor into the console but it's not actually using any storage under that virtual data store it's it's a remotely accessed data, remotely accessed data store from the backup storage and once that's been spun up you can then vmotion it or move the storage and make it a permanent vm 
uh, once it's up and running. So instant VM is great because it doesn't need a lot of additional disk space because it's booting off the backup storage. Um, and you can do this on any system without having to spend, you know, provision loads and loads of storage space ahead of time. And you can do it on a server by server basis. Now, we launched UDP 6.5 about a year ago now, um, and we've added lots of updates over the last 12 months or so as well. Um, so really, we have a strong release um, that has a lot of new functionality in there. So for example, we introduced hardware snapshot integration, where we can actually integrate with the storage array APIs for Nimble storage, HPE FreePAR, and also NetApp storage where we can actually back up the snapshots directly from the SAN. Um, we've also introduced Office 365 support. We now support both Exchange Office 365 and SharePoint Online. So we can do granular restore of emails and anything in a user's um, Exchange mailbox, but also um, we can do document level and template level recovery of SharePoint Online uh, as well. We're also hoping uh, in the in the next year to add OneDrive support as well. That's something that's coming. Uh, we're also looking to add, um, uh, we've added, sorry, UNC backup path support. So for customers running uh, NAS shares on the network, where there's no compute sitting behind those shares, uh, maybe it's a NAS head sitting on your SAN, um, or it could be a small departmental NAS filer, um, you know, from NetApp or iAmiga or Buffalo, one of these NAS vendors, you know, where you're using low cost NAS storage to share files across the office. Um, we can back up those and do incremental forever, compress and DG pull the backups, replicate them off site, whatever you need to do. We also fully certified Windows Server 2016, vSphere 6.5, all the way up to the latest uh, service pack levels. We also refreshed all our Linux distributions. We've also added things like Ubuntu and Debian physical support in there as well. Um, we did a lot of cloud uh, development, so we can now fully integrate with Amazon, uh, AWS, um, and also Microsoft Azure Cloud. So we can replicate your backups into the cloud. We can spin up your backups as virtual clones for disaster recovery into the cloud. We can also protect cloud workloads. So we've done a lot of certification with both Amazon and Microsoft to provide some really uh, innovative disaster recovery capabilities. We also added a lot of new features around DR testing. So we can now do automated sandbox testing of your backups into an isolated virtual switched environment that's not connected to the outside world. So we can spin up your backups as instant VMs on a test schedule, uh, make sure that they power on, make sure they test uh, connect to the test network, and then you get a full audit report on that. Um, we've also uh, done more reporting. So we've now got RPO and RTO reports in the dashboard and the console. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And we also added SLA reporting, so you can actually measure your recovery times against your business SLAs and, and actually understand if you're meeting your SLAs around recovery as well. We've done lots of other improvements, auto VM protection and Hyper-V and VMware environments, so you don't always have to go back in and add new VMs into the backup policy. It'll do it for you. Um, and lots of other improvements as well. Now, when it comes to licensing, um, UDP can be supplied in different ways, as we've already mentioned. But if you decide, actually, we want to buy our own servers and storage and we just want to license the software from ArcServe, there's different ways we can measure that license. We have CPU socket licensing, which is adding up the physical CPU socket count across all your physical servers. That includes virtual host servers and standalone non-virtual physical servers, if that makes sense. So any physical servers that haven't been virtualized and any virtual host, we just add up the physical populated socket count. Um, and then you can license an unlimited amount of machines across that environment um, and back up as many virtual servers and physical servers that's running across those sockets. Uh, we've also got per terabyte licenses, which is a managed capacity license. We license this basically on the amount of production data that you're backing up. So if you've got, you know, 50 terabytes of raw capacity in your SAN, 
but there's 35 terabytes populated, you'd buy a 35 terabyte license. So it's only the populated, you know, utilized capacity that we measure the license. We also have a per server license uh, with our UDP advanced edition. And that brings me on to the different editions of UDP. We have advanced, which is all the standard UDP functionality, all the global data deduplication, the incremental forever, the agentless backup for physical, uh, sorry, for virtual platforms, the ability to back up uh, application servers, Exchange, SQL, Active Directory, Oracle, etc., SharePoint, um, all the replication between sites, the virtual standby, the instant VM recovery is all included in advanced. Um, we also have premium, which also has everything that's in advanced, but it also has things like SAN hardware snapshot to integrate with disk arrays, role-based admin uh, into the UDP console, so you can create different role-based access. We have all the DR testing and SLA reporting and full tape library support. So with the premium license, you can migrate to a tape autoloader or library that's got two or more drives. If you only need to migrate UDP backups to a single drive autoloader, that's all covered in the advanced license. Um, so if you've got a larger tape library unit, you need premium. And then premium plus is everything that's in premium, but it also has that real-time replication and high availability technology that I mentioned that can do a synchronous block level, providing a near zero RPO of your physical and virtual workloads. So we've got um, a very flexible licensing option where you just license what you need where. So with the per socket, you can mix and match uh, the different additions. You could have, for example, you know, 30 sockets at advanced, 20 sockets at premium or premium plus. Um, and that means you're only licensing the software where you're actually using it. Um, we also have Office 365 licensing. Um, with Office 365, if you're using a per terabyte license, there's no additional cost for Office 365 as long as it's encompassed in your total storage capacity that you're managing. Um, with per socket licensing, you need to license Office 365 on top, and that's licensed by the amount of mailboxes that you're protecting or user accounts in Office 365. Um, we've also got um, appliances. Um, the appliances are really popular for a number of reasons. Um, a, you get everything in one box, so you get your compute, your storage, and your software all integrated together. Um, that means that you've got one throat to choke. If you know you're not having to go to your hardware vendor as a problem and then speak to the ArcServe, you just go to us and we manage everything, the hardware and the software. Um, but also it's very cost effective. Um, you get an all-inclusive capacity license built into the appliance. So you can back up as many physical and virtual machines that will fit onto that storage of the unit. You've even got unlimited Office 365 protection built into those appliances as well. So they're really cost effective. Um, and you know we've got different sizes of units that we can estimate the storage capacity requirements with you to give you the right size box to meet your needs and your future growth over the next three or five years. So we have four units in our range. We have the 8100 and 8200. These are one year units. The 8100 starts at four terabytes and can be expanded up to six terabytes of internal storage. The 8200 starts at eight terabytes and can be expanded up to 12 terabytes of internal storage. And then we've got two larger units. The 8300 is a two year unit. Um, that starts at 16 terabytes and can be expanded up to 40 terabytes of internal storage. And the 8400, which is our largest unit, starts at 32 terabytes and can be expanded up to 80 terabytes of internal storage. Now, these appliances also have um, Hyper-V installed on them. They come shipped with Windows Server 2016. So you can actually use the appliances as a provisioning box as well uh, as a backup repository. So for, for a lot of small, medium-sized businesses, it takes care of your disaster recovery as well, because this box acts as your provisioning server for spinning up your systems in a DR scenario. And that's why we allow you to also increase the RAM on these units, so we can make we can factor in the compute that may need to be running in a disaster recovery scenario, and add that onto the, the base needs of the appliance. Um, we, these units are really well specced. They've got Intel SSD cards. They've got dual power supplies. They use 12 gigabits per second uh, 
RAID controllers. The smaller units use RAID 5 disk configuration. The larger units use RAID 6. Um, so they're, they're very highly resilient. Um, they can be fitted with 10 gigabit ethernet, fiber channel, um, tape library connectivity, et cetera. So they're really customizable, all in one units. Um, and they're very, very popular. We're actually running a lot of promotions this quarter where you can actually buy one appliance and get the second one free. Um, you know, and there's no strings attached to that. There's no, it, it's a genuinely great offer. Um, and some customers, for example, are buying an appliance for their production environment and then they're getting a second box for free, which they're putting in their DR site and they're replicating between the two. And they've got everything covered from backup and recovery to disaster recovery to virtual provisioning all in uh, an enclosed solution. And the great thing is also from a deployment perspective, because the software is pre-installed, the deployment times are very, very fast as well because we just need to connect it to your network, power it on, run a configuration wizard, and you're ready to go. Um, we've also got expansion shells. Um, so, you know, even if you're in a situation where after three or four years you think mm, we're starting to get full now, you can actually add on storage into a separate, separate rack shelf. Um, so it's a one new expansion shell. Um, or to you for the larger ones, and they will sit under your appliance. They're SAS connected into the appliance, pops up as a new NTFS volume, and then we can expand your storage pool across that new storage. Um, it has SSD cards built into the expansion modules as well. So they're really designed to do in-place upgrades with minimal disruption to your production environment. Just going to quickly talk about the ArcServe Cloud now. Um, we've done a lot of development over the last 12 months now. So we really have two cloud offerings uh, for our customers. We have ArcServe Cloud Hybrid, which allows you to do disk to disk to cloud, which is an on-premise backup replicating into our cloud for DR. Uh, and we also have ArcServe Cloud Direct, which allows customers to basically deploy agents or an appliance, a virtual appliance into your environment to back up all your physical and virtual workloads directly to the cloud without requiring any on-premise hardware to hold a local copy, et cetera. So this can be ideal for organizations that are very distributed and they don't necessarily want to pull data across their networks, you know, to a head office or they don't want to invest um, in the, the setup costs of putting in a backup server or storage in lots of remote sites. So this cloud direct capability really fits that need uh, very well. Now, our hybrid cloud service, it's opened in a brand new UK uh, data center based in Manchester, um, which really is ideal for UK customers because it means they can extend their data protection from their on-premise on appliance or software deployed recovery point server, uh, which essentially does the same thing. And they can replicate the backups over the internet into our cloud and have that data secured and held off site. It also, acts as an air gap copy as well to, to ensure that if you have any crypto locker or ransomware attacks in your data center environment, that data wouldn't be uh, infiltrated into our cloud. It's a separate security model, et cetera. Um, we've also got um, DR as a service, which is an extension to our backup as a service. So you can decide what compute you would like to spin up in our cloud. We basically license that on the amount of RAM those compute resources require in your production environment. Um, and we also all allocate virtual CPUs to that as well. Um, and then we can actually spin up your backups as compute in our cloud. And you can then access those over a site to site VPN um, connection. So we basically do IP translation so you can ping those systems as if they're still running locally in your data center, but they're actually being redirected to our cloud. So it's a very innovative solution and it allows customers uh, to, to tick a lot of boxes around offsite data protection and compliance. Um, it also makes a lot of sense for a lot of IT departments are already running at 90, 100%, you know, where we take care of that cloud infrastructure for you um, and provide a service for you. So it makes it easier to manage as well. With the Cloud Direct technology, this diagram is a bit of a uh, an eye 
sort of challenge. But essentially what we're doing here is deploying agents onto your physical servers on your Hyper-V environment uh, to the Hyper-V hosts. Um, and then for a, a VMware environment, we drop in a virtual appliance. Um, and then basically what we can do is we can then take snapshots of your data, replicate it into our cloud. Works very similar to UDP in the fact that it only uploads the delta changes every time it runs. So it's very quick and efficient once you've got the baseline data uploaded. Um, and then from a, 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 a console that you manage yourself, you can invoke disaster recovery um, and all sorts of clever recovery capabilities from the console. Uh, our console is fully multi-tenanted, so it's ideal for managed service providers as well, where they can manage multiple customers in different views um, and do all the billing and the reporting. You can even uh, white label the solution with your own, own logos, et cetera, if you're a managed service provider as well. So that's something uh, else that we're offering from our Manchester data center. And just on that topic of our data center, just want to say that it's a fully audited um, compliant data center. We have two in the US as well, and we're planning to deploy other data centers around the world. Um, but this data center is completely managed and operated by ArcServe. Uh, it's a standards based stateless architecture, which basically means that we can scale out our operation to any size of customer. So, you know, we should never be in a position that we have to turn an opportunity down or not be able to work with a customer because they're too big for us. We can scale out our infrastructure um, to, you know, to as big as it needs to be. And it's already very scalable, but, you know, we can grow that out over time as well. Um, it's multi tenanted. Um, and it also has all the industry certifications that you would expect. Uh, we have our own DR resilient processes to protect your data from a DR. So, you know, we're not relying, you know, just having a single copy of your data in our cloud. It's all replicated and protected, etc. So it's a very clever uh, setup and uh, it's online now. It's available to all our UK uh, and European customers. Now, in terms of our customer base, it's just growing all the time. This is just an example of some of the customers that we've got in the UK. We have a, a real mix between public sector and commercial businesses. Uh, I wouldn't say we'd, we have a particular sweet spot. Um, any organization that needs cost-effective, efficient disaster recovery that's easy to manage, um, but it's also feature-rich uh, and provides all the functionality you need is a good candidate for us. Um, and we've worked with police forces, NHS, local government, uh, education, but we've also got large department stores, we've got gaming companies, we've got, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna read every icon off the chart there, but you can see there's lots of different organizations and that's just growing all the time. We're at, we have a fantastic case study uh, references on our website. So if you go to arcserve.com forward slash UK, we have loads of information available about case studies we've done with other customers. And most of them are very recent as well in the last 12, 18 months or so. Um, you can also download and test Arcs of UDP for free. We offer a no strings attached 30 day live trial copy of our software, which means when you install it in your test lab, you've got full access to everything for 30 days um, before it needs any license or, you know, so that gives you a good, good, period of time to test and have a play to make sure it meets your requirements. We also have try and buys on our appliances. So if you if an appliance sounds like a real interest to you, um, we can actually ship you the appliances uh, exactly like you would intend to keep them. I we would size them up, we would have all the right connectivity put on them, you know, and when you sh when we ship the unit, we run a POC with you to make sure it meets all your requirements. And if you're happy with that, you, we, you basically keep the appliance and we process the order. So we hold the order for 30 days so you can test it. And if for some reason you're not happy with it, you just ship the unit back to us um, and we tear up the purchase order. So it's as simple as that. Um, obviously we do our WebExes every Friday at 10, 10 a.m. UK time. So uh, you know if you've got any colleagues that would be interested in listening to me, or one of my colleagues present and demo software, they're more than welcome to join that. So what we're gonna do now is a quick demo of the product. 
Um, we should take about 10 minutes and then we're going to wrap up and have a Q&A. So what I'm going to do is just switch across. Now, the UDP console is completely web-based. Um, so there's no client install. Even if you're running one of our appliances, it's got a full web engine installed on it. So you can connect to it from any desktop in your organization. Um, and the browser will run on Safari, it'll run on Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge, Firefox, whatever you use, um, you'll be able to manage the UDP console. When you first log in, it takes you to what we call the dashboard. The dashboard kind of gives you a high level view of what's going on in your data protection environment. So in the top left hand corner here, we're looking at the data protection status. So this isn't just monitoring the backup status, this is monitoring every task that gets executed in the product. So we're monitoring replication tasks, offload to tapes. If you're copying recovery points to another disk from your primary disk, uh, virtual provisioning, restore tasks, uh, DR testing tasks, it's monitoring absolutely everything. So the fact that my circle is green is a good sign. It means everything in my lab is fully protected. There's not been any errors of any description um, in, in the recent days, so that's great. So I know I'm fully protected. In the middle here, we show you a line graph. This is showing you your storage utilization on your in your backup environment. So the dark blue line shows me how much physical storage I'm using to hold backup data. So it, across my two RPS servers, I'm, I'm storing uh, 178 and a half gigabytes worth of backup storage. Um, the blue line above that shows me how much was my last full backup. So it's, I've got 447 uh, gigabytes worth of data uh, protected. But if you add up all the historical recovery points for that data, I've, I can restore over 600 gigabytes. So in my lab, I'm getting about a 75, 80% data reduction. In the real world, however, this is a bit more like a ski lift. Uh, it kind of goes hugely shooting up because you know, in a production environment, you're backing up a lot more servers and the DG perfects really starts to kick in and you get very good data reduction rates. Now in the right hand side here, we're showing you the RPO reports. This is showing you the frequency uh, of your uh, backups. So it's showing you the age of your newest recovery points, the age of your oldest. It's showing you how many recovery points you're taking every calendar month. Um, and this gives you a gauge of how far back you know your retention policies. A lot of customers, for example, will hold 12 months worth of backups on disk, and they'll be able to work out how many recovery points are available from each historical calendar month, you know, going back 12 months, for example. Um, now, this also highlights to you if any backup schedules have been missed. So, for example, if I had a, a, a policy that says I'm backing up a load of SQL databases and I've got it to, to run every three hours. Um, if a three hour window was missed, you would get a bar here saying these four nodes haven't been backed up. They've missed a, an RPO. Uh, so you can click on that and it'll give you a list of the nodes affected. Um, so it's about tracking the, the retention of your data, how many recovery points you're storing uh, and how that's split over the, the, you know, the, the, the months gone by. And it's also highlighting you missed backups and things like that as well. Then we have the RTO reports. This links to SLA profiles. And this highlights to me, you know, um, every time I kick off a restore, I can define an SLA of how long it should actually take. Um, so when I kick off a restore, it's measuring the recovery time versus the SLA. If it recovers in that window, it marks it as met, which is green. And if it takes longer or fails, it will mark it as not met. So again, my RTOs are looking good. Um, everything's green. Now, in terms of general administration, we do most of this under what we call the resources tab. We've got a discovery tool here that will connect into your VMware environment, for example, if you want to uh, manage virtual backups from your VMware environment. We can also connect into uh, Hyper-V as well and protect all your Hyper-V servers. And we fully support Hyper-V clusters and everything up to Hyper-V Server 2016 from 2008 R2. So I can add these VMs in here. I can do the same for Hyper-V, um, just select on there, connect in, and I've got a Hyper-V uh, environment running. Um, and for your physical servers, we can look up your AD uh, and then add in all the physical servers that we want to manage for the backup. So you end up with a list of nodes, but we can also add things like 
Exchange, uh, Office 365, SharePoint Online. I've also got NAS shares getting backed up as well uh, from my NetApp filer, um, things like that as well. So you can actually uh, back up a lot of different data uh, sources now with UDP. Now, the ones that have got agents installed are the ones with these green little computer icons. And to push out agents onto your physical servers um, is really easy. You just select the nodes and say install upgrade agent and it just pushes it straight out from the console. It normally takes between five and 10 minutes to install a UDP agent um, and it's rebootless. You don't need to reboot the server after an install. We then set up our recovery point servers. These are the servers on the network where we're backing up the data to. So in my storage lab, I've got two recovery point servers. I have one on premise uh, and I have a storage pool on there. Uh, that storage pool is made up of various directory structures. Uh, if I click on the storage pool, it will actually show me what nodes are backed up to it and how many recovery points I've got available. And if I, if I actually need to understand the, the frequency or the backup history uh, against a particular node, I can just go into here and it shows me all the dates and times that the backups have run over the last several weeks and months. Um, so I can go into there. Um, I've also got a second RPS, which is in the cloud and I replicate the data there for disaster recovery offsite protection. Now, the last thing we do really to get underway is create what we call plans. A plan is a policy group uh, where you can add multiple tasks. So if we click on this plan here, you can see on the right hand side that I've got a lot of tasks in this plan. I've actually got five tasks. The first task is an agentless backup to back up the nodes agentlessly uh, because it's VMware and Hyper-V. Then I replicate my backups off site and uh, I can actually go into all these uh, settings and see what's protected, et cetera. Um, and after I replicate, I'm doing a monthly copy to tape. I also convert the backups into virtual standby clones for off site disaster recovery. And I've also got automated DR testing in there. And if I actually click on the plan, um, that was just giving me a summary before, but I can actually go in and, you know, and add to the plans and modify them, etc. So if I want to add more VMs that I want to back up, I can go into here. There's where I'm backing it up to. Um, I've got backup schedules. You can create daily, weekly, monthly schedules, how many recovery points you want to hold for each. Um, if I want to add, for example, a high frequency backup schedule, I could say I want to do a backup every hour. I can actually go down to every 15 minutes between time ranges in a day. So I could say between eight and six, do a backup, you know, maybe every um, hour. And I may only want to do that Monday to Friday. So I can add in a high frequency backup schedule there. Um, and then in the advanced options, you've got things like if you want to truncate your application logs for SQL exchange, etc., you can do all that. You've got placeholders to run scripts. You've got uh, real time alerts that you can configure to get real time email alerts if any tasks have a problem. And then I've got my replication task here and replicating into the cloud. Um, I can do things like bandwidth throttling there as well. Um, I've also got my copy to tape. So on my monthly backup to disk, I offload it to my tape library. Um, then I've got my virtual standby task, which is basically uh, creating virtual clones from the replicated copy because you can do it locally or from the replicated copy. And I'm backing up VMware and spinning it up into Hyper-V for DR. Um, and then I've got a DR testing task, um, which allows me to spin up my backups um, into a test subnet to make sure that they're working um, and everything's working. So on a monthly backup to disk, I'm connecting into my vCenter um, and actually spinning up my systems back into VMware for DR testing. And this will prove that the backups are good, but it will also prove that if I need to do this for real, I'm not going to suddenly find. So I've got a DR test network. I'm not using the production network um, and I'm spinning up the systems using their production IP settings in this isolated subnet uh, to spin up. So once you've kind of created these policies, they get deployed. And it's all workflow driven. So you don't need to work out when it should replicate because it knows that as soon as a backup to disk completes, it's time to replicate. It knows once it takes a monthly backup, it's time to do an offload to tape. So all the various tasks kick in automatically and it makes it very easy to manage. So what I'm gonna show you here is if I was having to do um, different types of restores, I can do granular recovery 
which is right clicking a server and going restore. I could kick off backups now, but I'm just conscious of time. Um, but obviously the backups are very efficient and you can monitor all the backups running through the jobs queue. But if you're wanting to do a restore, we can browse recovery points. This allows us to do point in time restores of any date taken. And I can go in, for example, mount a volume from the backup and I can re restore anything in a file system uh, and recover it back. And I can do, and this will sh recover everything exactly to the point in time it was backed up. Um, so it's really easy to do a restore. Um, We've also got the ability to restore things like SQL Exchange, Oracle databases using VSS writers. So I could go in here and say, I want to restore that SQL instance back to the original location or an alternative SQL instance, or I can export it to disk. And if I export a backup to disk, it restores it exactly the same as a SQL export. So it's like doing a native SQL backup and I can just import that into SQL Studio um, and then import the various SQL objects, table spaces, I need to bring in. So we've got all that. You can do things like active directory object level recovery via domain controllers, and we can go all the way down to attribute level where I can restore individual attributes, maybe to a, a an AD user account. So I could go, for example, if I click on me, I can go in and I can restore my mail profile. It could be I want to restore an active directory group or a computer object, and it restores all the original SID and GID I can do email item recovery, restore anything in a user's mailbox, uh, calendar items, contacts, tasks, and re restore that straight back to the mail server or put it into a PST folder. Um, I can do VM level recovery. I can search for files. I can search for files sent to the cloud. So we've got a lot of granular restore options. But one thing I wanted to quickly show you is our virtual provisioning. So say you have a production server that completely fails. I can right click that server, say standby VM, select a snapshot point, power on. Um, and then when I power this on now in my DR offsite location, you'll see there's a server in the middle there called DR underscore FSHA dash appliance. It was backed up from vCenter and it's just been powered on now. So this server um, is a DR copy. Um, it's already been provisioned because it's virtual standby. Um, and we keep it in sync with the backups. And within a few minutes, that system is on the network. Um, so instead of you being down for several hours because you've had a complete server or an environment failure, you can spin up all your DR clones at the DR site within a few minutes and have them on the network. Um, and then you notify your service desk to say those systems are back. And then if you want to um, migrate them back into production, you can just migrate the VMs using vMotion or you can copy the storage across. Um, there's a number of ways you can do it in VMware and Hyper-V tools. So it's really easy to, to, to recover back after the failure as well. So we've got all the virtual provisioning. We've also got instant VM recovery, which is very similar to uh, virtual standby by where you can actually say, I want to create um, uh, an instant VM copy. So I can just click on there. And this runs a four step wizard. So I select, so it just takes a second to load. So you select your recovery point. Then, oh, this is an encrypted backup. We, If we enable encryption, it's 256 bit AES encryption. So I can go in here, select VMware or Hyper-V as the provisioning platform. I'm gonna use vCenter today. Uh, click in there, there. And then all I need to do is create a mount point. So on the backup server, which we call our recovery point server, I've created a folder called mount on our, my instant VM volume. Um, and then I can add in all the networking and it will pick up all the settings automatically. And then I can say uh, boot now. And with instant VM restore, it's doing the similar thing to virtual standby, but it's actually booting directly from the backup storage. So when I go into my inventory here, we've just added this machine in. You can see at the bottom there, it's reconfiguring that virtual machine. Um, and what it's doing is on the actual server, it mounts that storage as a NFS data store. So if I go into here, there's one called uh, UDP manager. And if you look at the volume type, it's NFS. So it's a remote, remotely mounted data store um, where we mount it to the backup. 
um, and then we provision this, configure all the networking and spin it up. So in a second, this machine will get powered on um, and it'll be on the network. So this is another way that we can do uh, virtual uh, provisioning as well. So I'm going to wrap up for today. I could go on and on and show you real-time replication, high availability, the report center, which is actually really nice where we can actually show you um, all the old backup status reports. Um, and we can show you this in, for example, a bar chart. Um, and you can look at days and then you can click on those and then you get a breakdown. And all these reports can be scheduled out by email. So you can get an embedded HTML interactive email with the reports built into them and you can see the status. And if any jobs have failed, you would get a table that shows you the nodes. You click on the nodes, it shows you the error codes, et cetera. So we've got all interactive reporting uh, built into UDP as well. So that's me gonna finish the presentation for today. I'm going to switch back to the slide deck and open it up for questions. So if you do have any questions, um, you can raise this um, on the GoToWebinar question panel. Um, alternatively, you can email me. It's charlie.smith at arcserve.com. Be more than happy to uh, take any questions that you have. And uh, listen, it's Friday. I hope you enjoy the weekend when it comes. I hope you've learned something useful from this presentation today, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. So thank you very much.